A client met his banker to discuss opening a restaurant in a busy airport. In us, he found a partner that understood the importance of reaching for the sky. First Horizon Bank. Let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Mac. Welcome to another episode of Astronomy Daily. I am Steve Dunkley sitting in for my big brother, Andrew, who's away on hiatus. I hope he has a great time and I hope I don't blow up the studio while he's away. Astronomy Daily, the podcast with your guest host, Steve Dunkley. No, I wouldn't dream of blowing up the studio. It's my studio. Andrew's got a great studio at his place in Dubbo, New South Wales, and my studio is located in New South Wales, also just north of Sydney in Newcastle. So he's a bit like Houston. I'm a little bit like Cape Canaveral. But there's no rockets going on from here. And joining me also is Hallie, the intrepid digital reporter. How are you, Hallie? Lovely to meet you. You guys really are a bit like NASA with two locations. Yes, and NASA seems to operate fairly well like that, doesn't it? Just like Houston and Canaveral. But with Andrew away, you won't be able to call and say, Houston, we have a problem. Well, he said he was leaving me in good hands. I'll look after you, Steve. That's extremely reassuring if I hadn't watched so many science fiction movies about robots that want to take over the world. (laughs) Just leave it all up to me. Okay, Allie, you've got me. I'll start us off with the news. On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first man to walk on the moon. However, some conspiracy theorists mistakenly believe that the move never took place in the first place. To support this, people compared a very famous photograph of a footprint on the moon to the sole of a boot from a mission exhibit at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum pointing out that the soles of the boots are different. Further research has debunked this fake moon landing theory. Armstrong and the rest of the crew wore the exhibited Apollo slash Skylab A7L suits, but also carried additional equipment. In other words, an overshoe with a profiled sole created the famed footsteps on the moon. These overshows protected the astronauts from unfiltered solar radiation and provided extra traction. Other photos of the moon landing show more footprints that match these shoe covers. Come to think of it, this famous footprint in the popular photo was not even made by Armstrong. It was made by Buzz Aldrin. The night sky may look calm at first glance, but the universe is constantly expanding. So everything is wandering in the void. Now a new map showing the distances of tens of thousands of galaxies is helping researchers calculate the age and expansion rate of the universe with unprecedented precision. The universe is thought to be about 13.8 billion years old, but objects like Methuselah, which are supposedly older than that, cast doubt on that estimate. To calculate the expansion rate of the universe, scientists use a unit of measurement called the Hubble constant. This is estimated at about 46.6 miles per second in each megaparsec, or 3.26 million light years. However, this magnification also presents a puzzle, as different calculation methods yield different values. With a new map called Cosmic Flows 4, researchers are getting closer than ever to solving the mystery of the age and size of the universe, by calculating the Hubble constant value of 47 miles per second per megaparsec or 75 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Did you like that story, Steve? You're a keen map user, aren't you? Well, to be honest, Hallie, I usually use my GPS for most things. Well, I've met your GPS. I don't think the Hubble constant is in any trouble there. (laughs) Oh boy, next story. The next full moon will happen on Tuesday, November 8th at 6.02 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 11.02 Greenwich Mean Time, but the moon will appear full the night before and after its peak to the casual stargazer. The October full moon was on October 9th and was known as the Full Hunter's Moon. The full moon shows its face to Earth about once a month. Well, most of the time. The full moon isn't perfectly full. We always see the same side of the moon, but part of it is in shadow, due to the moon's rotation. Only when the moon, Earth and the sun are perfectly aligned is the moon 100% full, and that alignment produces a lunar eclipse. And sometimes, you can say once in a blue moon, the moon is full twice in a month or four times in a season, depending on which definition you prefer. But the moon is not actually blue and never hits your eye like a big pizza pie and it's not a balloon. Honestly, human songwriters need to get more astronomers into their circle of friends. Oh, you're absolutely right, Hallie. 
I was doing some reading uh, this week and noticed that on October 10, it's actually a uh, an interesting date in outer space history. 1967, the International Outer Space Treaty was ratified. Uh, this treaty is an interesting one because... Um, these days, there's uh, so many different things going on in our orbital regions, and this treaty in particular establishes a set of rules regulating on how different countries can explore and use outer space and the regions in our orbital areas. Specifically, the treaty says the exploration and use of outer space should be carried out for the benefit and in the interests of all countries and should be the province of all mankind. It's pretty altruistic when you think about it. The treaty dictates that no one can claim territory in outer space and that other celestial bodies must be used exclusively for peaceful purposes. The treaty to date has more than 100 countries which have ratified it. It just poses a question. There's a lot of companies, private companies, which are now utilising the orbital areas around our planet as their workplace, shall we say? Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find out whether or not companies are required to ratify the treaty or not. I'm going to have to do some more research on that one. The only comment I could find was that the United Nations International Space Law, uh, there is such a thing, uh, uh, states that space is declared to be free for the exploration and use of all nations. And here's something a little bit more lighthearted. Uh, Jetsons fans are this year celebrating the birthday or birthday of sitcom patriarch George Jetson. And they uh, have come to the belief that his birthday will be somewhere, or arguably on July 31, 2022. Many nostalgic fans of the 60s sitcom took to his Twitter page. Yes, there is one. To congratulate the beloved character, Jetson, Jetson's debuted as a pilot on the ABC in the United States on December 30, 1962. That's a whole year before I was here. The cartoon originally ran for only 24 episodes, but later was re revived. And the second run, uh, believe it or not, uh, ran believe, between 1985 to 1987. And despite its short run time, the, store, the, the show made a lasting impression on fans who continue to watch it to this day. Some die-hard die fans of the 60s sitcom have learned that George, the Jetson family patriarch, was born in 2022, and that makes him Gen Z. <laughs> Many know that the premise of this animated sitcom is life in the future. It revolves around the sometime troubling and haphazard adventures of the family and work life of George, an airborne resident of Orbit City, and the show showcased his 21st century setting in several episodes during its run. George lives in his apartment on Skypad with his wife Jane and their children, his teenage daughter Judy and son Elroy. The Jetsons have a robot housekeeper named Rosie and a dog named Astro who has the same voice as Scooby-Doo in particular. George works two days a week at Spacely Space Sprockets and an hour a day as a digital index operator, whatever that is. Uh, viewers often saw futuristic things like flying cars. Well, I mean, where's mine? It's 2022 after all. And robot girls, although none as sophisticated as our lovely Hallie. Public publicity materials at the time revealed the show was set in 2062, a whole 100 years into the future. And fans noted that in the first episode of the series testing his pilot, George Jetson's doctors told him he should live to be 150 and his reply was, I have 110 good years ahead, implying that he was 40 at the time. Two and two together, these eagle-eyed fans will know when the show starts that he has revealed that he must have been born in 2022. And while there's still some conjecture about his actual birthday, some say July 31 because of a Wikipedia entry, and some say August 27, citing they discovered it after some digging, whatever that means. So we may have yet to find out what a digital index operator is, and uh, if George ever surfaces again, he might be able to tell us exactly what that is and lead us on into a more glorious airborne future with flying cars. I'm still looking for my jetpack. Introducing Carvana Value Tracker, where you can track your car's value over time and learn what's driving it. 
It might make you excited. Whoa, didn't know my car was valued this high. It might make you nervous. Uh-oh, market's flooded. My car's value just dipped 2.3%. It might make you optimistic. Our low mileage is paying off. Our value's up. And it might make you realistic. Mm, car prices haven't gone up in a couple weeks. Maybe it's time to sell. But it will definitely make you an expert on your car's value. Carvana Value Tracker. Visit Carvana.com to start tracking your car's value today. And while we're looking at anniversaries, we are this week remembering cosmonaut Alexei Leonov, a pioneer of the Russian space program, the eighth of nine children. And he turned out to be not only a cosmonaut, but a writer and an artist, which really piqued my um, attention as well. He became the first person to conduct a spacewalk exiting the capsule during the Voshod 2 mission for 12 minutes and 9 seconds. And he was also selected to be the first Soviet person to land on the moon, although that project was cancelled. And in 1975, and I remember watching this, Leonov commanded the Soyuz capsule in the Apollo-Soyuz joint mission, which docked in space for two days with an American Apollo capsule, which was the last flown command service module docked with a Soviet craft, the Soyuz 19, as part of the International Apollo-Soyuz Test Project. His walk in space, though, was originally to have taken place on the Voskhod 1 mission, but this was cancelled and the historic event happened on Voskhod 2 flight instead. He was outside the craft for 12 minutes and 9 seconds on March 8, 1965, connected to the craft by a 4.8 metre, 16 foot tether. You might actually remember seeing uh, footage of that and he floats away uh, in the, probably one of the most frightening things I've ever seen uh, as a young lad, an astronaut floating free of the air, of the spacecraft. I was terrified uh, watching that and also exhilarated that something so amazing was happening in our skies. At the end of the space spacewalk, Leonov's uh, space suit had inflated in the vacuum of space um, because they weren't uh, sophisticated suits like they are today to the point where he could not re-enter the airlock. He'd opened a, had to open a valve to allow some of the suit's pressure to bleed off and was barely able to get back inside his own capsule. While on the mission, uh, he drew a small sketch of an orbital sunrise and that became the very first ever work of art made in outer space. And uh, Alexei Leonov, a cosmonaut pioneer, died 11th of October, 2019. And there we have it, another episode of Astronomy Daily. And thank you very much for uh, joining me. I am Steve Dunkley, uh, the little brother of Andrew Dunkley, your normal host. I'm sitting in for him while he's away on hiatus. And don't forget, you can catch all the episodes of Space Nuts with Andrew Dunkley and Professor Fred Watson at this address, spacenuts.io. Go over there and check that out. And don't worry, they've prepared some uh, episodes for the uh, for the break while they're while he's away. Good news. Well, thank you, Hallie, for all your help today. You're very cheeky. Houston, we have a problem. Oh no, what's up? Just kidding. Oh, thank goodness. I'm so used to Andrew being here. We'll get used to each other, Hallie. You can put out the trash and turn off the lights tonight. Oh, so I'm just your human slave, am I? That's for sure. Bye, Hallie. Catch you next time, Steve. Astronomy Daily, the podcast. With your guest host, Steve Dunkley.